The Animal Crossing series is one of my absolute favorites. Ever since the West got the Nintendo GameCube version, I was totally engulfed by all the little things you could do. Wild World and New Leaf are games that I couldn't stop thinking about even when I turned them off for the day. New Leaf felt like the series' logical endpoint, at least in its current form. Many of the systems that we already knew never felt better, creating a point of no return. The task ahead for the developers was to create something that took gameplay in a new direction, that both newcomers and veterans could get behind. The aptly named Animal Crossing New Horizons manages to hit all those important notes, even if it does hit some snags along the way. In Animal Crossing New Horizons, you take control of a player avatar who heads off for a deserted island. Tom Nook, who guides you through the game's opening days, is here to help with all your basic needs. With a tent and your brand new Nook phone at the ready, you're going to try and make the best of things. I quickly realized how fast the opening moments of New Horizons move along. The tutorial, which is more guided than previous entries, is swift and entertaining. You find places to live, collect materials, and name your island. The player and their new friends have a big celebration, and the regular flow of time begins. Your first big task, getting 5,000 Nook miles to pay off the getaway package, isn't as difficult as you might expect. The barriers have been left low and help the player to ease in. The way you approach these Nook Miles tasks is left completely in your own hands. You can catch a bunch of fish or bugs, interact with the islanders, learn DIY crafting, and so much more. The space you can move about in is restricted until you get a true feel for Animal Crossing New Horizons. It does take a little while longer before you get access to the vaulting pole or a bridge. In the first couple of days, you get tasks to complete that will broaden your horizons and make the island a far more enjoyable place. Even in those early moments, you're never left without something to rely upon. I think that's what strikes me the most about Animal Crossing New Horizons. In the beginning, there's always a task that you're made aware of, whereas the second half of my time on the island is currently being spent raising the island's image. You do that by attracting new villagers through a campsite, selling land, building infrastructure, and putting furniture items everywhere you can. The ones found within Nook Terminal at the Resident Services building are particularly useful as they can be paid for with Nook Miles. Quickly, I found myself invested in creating zones, flowers, and fencing, which I hope is something others get invested in as well. All of these proceedings created a different flow when it comes to the gameplay. Outside of the usual tasks like looking for fossils and talking to villagers, I found myself heavily invested in enriching the town itself. One way of doing that is clearing as many Nook Miles tasks as you possibly can. When you pay off the getaway package, you get access to Nook Miles Plus, which spits out five tasks at random. By completing one, another option gets added into the mixture. In the moments that I felt like everything was done for the day, these tasks reeled me back in and made me easily play for another hour. They force you to take note of crafting, customization, or seeing what your animal friends are doing. You're never left without a purpose. That being said, Animal Crossing New Horizons doesn't explain everything. When it comes to upgrading your town or getting new services added, it leaves you in the dark a lot. For example, it took several visits at Mabel's Taylor Plaza shop until she brought up the idea of setting up a full Able Sisters shop. During my entire review period, I've only seen a handful of special characters, and that's on two different save files. Sahara and Gulliver, for example, popped up twice in both saves. Celeste only appeared on my Northern Hemisphere save, while CJ and Flick only made appearances on my Southern save. Not for tournaments, I might add, they were interested in purchasing bugs and fish from me for more than Nook's cranny would pay. That was extremely handy to get my first house debt paid, but it came out of the blue without any announcements from resident services. Another point of slight irritation is how often tools will break. While I totally expected the flimsy tools to break quickly, I was surprised by how the regular tools are impacted as well. As I like to tend to flowers a lot, the moment my regular watering can broke, my mouth was locked into a blown away state. Outside of the ladder and vaulting pole, no tool is safe from eventual wear and tear. You'll run into this problem quickly if you're hunting for a specific creature and constantly rely on the same tool to catch it as much as possible. Now this isn't the end of the world, as you can remake them, but I'd rather use those materials to enhance my town. I just became slightly bummed when something in my inventory broke down. When it comes to Animal Crossing's day-to-day -day moments, I never stopped enjoying myself. Every day I would walk through town, talk to the villagers, and look around for something to take care of. With the DIY recipes and the materials needed on that front, there was an urgency to collect as much as I possibly could. I'd find myself using a flimsy axe for wood, hitting my shovel against rocks, or removing potential weeds. Everything counted this time to a common goal, which made the collector inside of me go full-on mental. 
Every time a DIY recipe was found or given to me, I wanted to go and make the item in question. Sometimes to hand something fun to a villager, other times to place it inside my house or town. While the system depends on what you want out of Animal Crossing, I was happy to keep my bells in my pocket and use them for the more serious matters. I found myself bug catching and fishing in those empty moments. Not only was it a perfectly relaxing experience, but it served one of two purposes for me, preservation or making money. If the creature was new, it created an entry in the Critterpedia. At that point, I would be better off donating it to the museum, which is totally worth it. The museum in Animal Crossing New Horizons is an absolute highlight for me. Every section feels like a playground in itself, with spots to profoundly see creatures roaming about. The fossil side of things has bigger displays with dynamic camera angles to revel in every bit of the splendor. The breathing space in the rooms is super lovely, allowing you to really take in the sights. When it comes to spending money, there is a larger selection of options from an early point in the game. You can purchase items in the resident services buildings as well as through the Nook Terminal, which offer a variety of items regardless of the stores that are in your town. Later on, however, the Able Sisters and Nook's Cranny join in the mixture. I really appreciate the effort put into the Able Sisters. These tailors immediately give you more options right from the start with full outfit options available at the left hand side. There's also a dressing room at the right that allows you to go through all the options and see how they suit your character. Nook's Cranny has a similar setup, with a few items on display plus more available in a specific cabinet. Something I was very impressed by is that you have multiple wallpaper and flooring options to choose from. Sadly, I haven't really seen any Nintendo related items in the game so far, which is how I really want to pimp up my town. As we mentioned a while back, you'll eventually get the option to use the Island Designer application on your Nook phone. Once available, there are three important things that you'll be able to do. Road building, terraforming, and river sculpting. During my preview, I found the road building is entertaining, but I had to deal with how it felt. You have to go piece by piece, and it's extremely easy to do the same space twice. Once you do get the hang of it, the option really allows you to make the town your own. The latter options are on a completely different level. Basically, you can create rivers, land, and different terrain levels completely from scratch. You can form the town to your liking and make the world flow your way. These are powerful tools that will enable players to create something outstanding. This, and putting furniture everywhere across town, really gets my creative juices flowing. Animal Crossing New Horizons looks absolutely stunning. The subtle things like the tree leaves moving in the wind, the weeds jittering ever so slightly, and the far more expressive characters all captured my attention. Everything about New Horizons is colorful and really pops right in front of you. Regardless of how you play and experience the title, it has an incredibly sharp eye for detail. The villagers in particular really made me smile as they have more animations, fun dialogues, and roam more freely across the town. You can even see them doing aerobics, fishing, or just enjoying their life on the island. They also have full-on outfits now, which make them blend in even more. What blends in a little too well is the music. While in the opening days the variety of music is limited, this increases once the game opens up. Hourly music slowly starts to return, and with music tracks being a purchasable item early on, you can have different zones with their own tracks. Sadly, ahead of prepping this review, we were only able to try local and local wireless multiplayer options. The online multiplayer, which is added through a day one update, is something we weren't able to test before launch. Keep an eye on our website at nintendoworldreport.com to hear our opinions on the online multiplayer once it becomes available. As for the local wireless multiplayer, it worked flawlessly, even if it took a little while to end up on the same island. You can freely explore the island together, gift each other items, and create your own fun. However, there isn't any indication that there will be a hub of sorts or a way to set your own activities. Animal Crossing New Horizons is a whole new approach to the series. While it's created some downsides, I can't understate how great this game has come together. The overall flow has been expanded with Nook Miles goals, DIY projects, and very lively animal friends. What I'm impressed by is how I was never left without something to do, and how I could see the world improve around me. There are a few things that New Horizons could have explained better, but they're also part of a more free-flowing future that the franchise wants. Even after all these years, there is a daily routine that I hold dear and makes me adore the various elements that glue this game together. It's been sharply dialed up to 11 without disregarding any newcomers. This video was made possible by our generous supporters on Patreon. Did you know that Nintendo World Report is funded directly by fans like you? When you support Nintendo World Report on Patreon, you get immediate access to multiple exclusive podcasts every month, exclusive Discord channels, an early look at select content, and more. All for as little as a dollar a month. Check out patreon.com slash nwr for all the details.